the bottle episode. I guess technically all of my videos are bottle episodes, but this one is about actual bottles. That's a dad joke and a sitcom joke. It's all about value. Bottles were an immediate and vital part of my early parenting because my son was allergic to his mother's breast milk, and it turned out that bottle feeding required a little more knowledge and preparation than I had anticipated. There are two main concerns when buying bottles, the bottle size or shape, and the nipple flow. For size and shape, I suggest having some half-size bottles for early infancy, which are around like four to five ounces. You don't need a bunch of them, as kids under four months don't eat a whole lot. But you can start with the full eight to 10 ounce bottles if you want to save some cash and aren't worried about the convenience of tucking half-size bottles into bags. Next, there is the brand and shape. I had some small bottles from Nuck, Nuke, I don't know how you're supposed to say it, uh, but I ditched those pretty quickly. Mostly, I didn't like that the bottle designs were funky and the nipples were all trying new methods and shapes. Because this is the future. Where are my flying cars? The future of bottles. Where Marky Mark discovers a sentient race of ambulatory containers. And we are their food. You damn dirty Tupperware. Seriously, make sure you clean your containers. That future is bleak. As I was saying, I was not a fan of trying to reinvent the bottle. A rubber tip with a hole has worked for more than a century. Let's just get the job done. But mostly, I got rid of them because I didn't know if it was Nuck or Nook. Inuk! <laughs> I ended up with some Gerber and Playtex bottles. My favorite were the kind that tilted at a 45 degree angle. I love these because they're easier to hold for extended periods. And trust me, you're going to hold a lot of bottles. They also help ensure the contents stay forward so that air doesn't get into the nipple. Now we come to the part that I enjoy saying out loud the least. You're going to deal with different nipple flow rates. Say it again. Say it again. I'm not going to say it again. When the kids are super young, flow needs to be slower. Too fast for an infant and they might choke. They also might fall asleep, which is the baby shutting down, or they'll just start refusing the bottle. But later, you need more flow so they're not overworking themselves just to get a meal. But this means you need to test every single nipple and make sure they're providing the right flow. Did he say it? Obviously, you won't know what kind of flow you need looks like at first, so make sure you get at least six to eight nipples and test them all by putting some warm water in a bottle and gently squeezing it to see how much comes out and how fast. Also grab some nipples with a higher flow rate. He almost said it. So that you can teach yourself what to expect from each nipple type. At this point, I should mention that you probably need six or more bottles. I recommend eight to 10. That way you can always have a day's worth drying while the rest are working. There are going to be a lot of feedings. There are also several items that you should pick up to help with the cleaning and rotation process, but I'll get there in a minute. So if you have eight nipples of the necessary flow rate, you should be able to reasonably assume that more of them are functioning correctly than aren't. So go through them all and test the flow. Too much is a no-go, don't use it. While too little is also a problem, if you're very careful, you can widen the opening slightly to correct this, but unless you cauterize the cut you make, it has the potential to expand, so keep an eye on it. Which shouldn't be a problem, because you will be squeezing every bottle to test the flow before you give it to your child. Right? Remember, your kid is going to be gumming these things to death, and they eventually wear out. You will definitely replace nipples before you no longer need bottles. Okay, now for the extras. First of all, you need brushes to clean the bottles. The formula can stick and become rancid or moldy. Get a brush set that has a smaller brush in the handle for cleaning out the inside of the nipples. You do not want your kid ingesting bits of mold. Then you should get a bottle basket, which keeps all the small parts together for you and allows them to clean more easily. These things are so awesome that I bought two and they have been in my dishwasher for six years. I don't even have bottles anymore. I use a lot of ramekins and thermos coffee mugs that have to be disassembled and the bottle baskets are the only thing that has worked for me. If you're trying to connect to people, maybe don't mention your ramekin washing troubles. What's a ramekin? Is it like that toupee for your bathing suit area? Nope. Why would you put that in the dishwasher? Something else you should consider is picking up a formula portion container. These allow you to store a day's worth of powdered formula in separate amounts so that you can just dump and shake. It also lets you leave the giant drum of powder at home. Lastly, get a bottle-specific drying rack. It suspends the parts, which ensures they completely dry. It also makes sure your entire bottle system is always in the same place. My final bit of advice is to be absolutely certain about the amount of time you can make formula in advance. That stuff can literally go rancid and will mess your kid up. They say it lasts 24 to 48 hours if you refrigerate it, and that's probably fine. 
I may be crazy, but I avoid microwaving plastic at all costs, regardless of the chlorofluorocarbon standards. I just get bottles of water at room temperature and use them to make my kids' formula. It's literally dump a measure, add water, and shake. So I never understood why people would really need to prepare and refrigerate a bunch of baby bottles in advance. Let's review the list. Get 6 to 10 bottles so that the ones you just cleaned have a chance to dry. Bottles with a 45 degree angle top are awesome. Buy nipples with different flow rates so you can be certain of the differences. Get a brush designed to clean bottles with a smaller brush to clean the nipples. Get a bottle drying rack. And finally, a formula portion container for when you need to be out of the house for the day. Today's sponsor is a maker of wireless earbuds. Tiny, magical devices that make sweet, sweet music in your ears. Well, the music comes from a device. A device that's in your ears. No, you need a phone or a tablet for the wireless earbuds to connect with. Then you get that sweet music all to yourself. That's right. Please buy this product so that nobody else has to listen to your shitty music or weird conspiracy podcast. You can listen to your cult's leader in the privacy of your own head, where only you will be catfished by their insane theories and ideology. Wear them on the bus or the subway to ensure you remain a cult of one. That way we don't have to put up with your clickbait conspiracy dog whistle douchebaggery. I feel like we may have gone off message. Completely. I can literally feel the audience pulling away. Buy wireless earbuds from whatever sponsor is still willing to advertise with us. There are so few left. So I don't have any brand preference for any of the items I mentioned here, except no, not those guys. What's important with the bottles is that you find something affordable that works and is carried extensively by whatever stores you shop at, because you will need replacement parts, and when you come back in six months, you don't wanna to have to buy an entire new and different set of bottles, because on your first purchase, you had to get the bottles with the awesome new design and space age nipple that they only carried on some random Tuesday in March, and now you have to order directly from their website in Helsinki and pay triple the item cost in shipping. Right, I need four Ooften Follett Venti bottles by the case. And how much is that? Wow, you Nook guys are really running a racket. What's that? It's pronounced N-A-K? What the? Just buy the ones you see the most of that you feel are made well. It's a tube with a rubber stop that goes in a mouth. Seriously though, get those dishwasher baskets. They're awesome. Oh, you don't care for my attitude? Listen here, you Scandinavian douchebag. I'm gonna crawl through this phone and insert some nooks into some of your nooks, you patronizing. Hello? That was entirely predictable. When do you think I lost him? Doesn't matter. Hopefully they recorded it for quality assurance purposes. I have some general thoughts about mentally preparing for raising a kid and some bits and bobs of advice for the early stages that I wanted to share because they really helped me out. Check that out in the place with the thing. I'll see you in the next.